If you truly love nature and are visiting Vietnam, you need to go to Cat Tien National Park. The park is one of the best places to see wildlife in Southeast Asia due to its natural beauty, high biodiversity, and interesting history tied to the war that affected this place half a century ago. This video is a vlog of my trip to Cat Tien, and I give travel tips along the way so that you have the best ecotourism experience possible while visiting this place. So good morning. Ho Chi Minh City in the Saigon district. I'm gonna get ready this morning and try to get out of here as soon as possible uh, to go to Cat Tien National Park. Okay, now I am booking a bus to Cat Tien National Park. My bus leaves in like half an hour. That's gonna be a four hour ride there. We finally got onto our shuttle. We're on our way to a sleeping bus. Now we are getting on the night bus. One thing that is interesting about traveling on buses in Vietnam is they make you take off your shoes. It makes a lot of sense because you don't have to clean the bus as much. Why don't we do that back home in the United States? I think we should. The bus just dropped me off. It was pretty abrupt. In this town, I don't even know the name of the town, haven't even checked my phone. But yeah, this is what you call an off-beaten path adventure because right here waiting for me is this local guy. He's going to give me a ride. Uh, we're going to go on motorbike 40 minutes to the National Park. So this is what you call an off-the-beaten path adventure. It's starting to get pretty exciting. And what's your name? Name? Nam. 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 I'm Eddie. I'm Eddie. Nice to meet you. Uh. I have no choice but to trust him, but he seems like a good guy. Thank you, we made it. We made it here. Thank you very much, Nam. Yeah, See you later. All right, so I made it here to this hostel and I'm gonna stay here. So I'm all checked into my room. It's really cool, this hostel is right on the other side of the river from Katia National Park. The National Park is just those trees right there on the other side of the river and I'm paying eight bucks a night for this private room, a double bed, and I'm just excited so I'm gonna Take a boat over the park headquarters. So I just bought a ticket for the boat over there at the ticket stand. When you come to Cat Tien, uh, there's just sort of this little hub of hostels and hotels on the other side of the river of the national park. And I'm about to go catch this boat. Thank you. All right, now I am up here going into the park headquarters, gonna look for a bike. All right, so I just paid for my bike and I just met some homie G's over here. These are my buddies. I haven't even asked you, your guys' names or where you're from. We're from Denmark. You're from Denmark and your name is? I'm Thijs. Thijs? And my name is Jacob. And we're gonna go have some fun. They're gonna show me a cool place where we're gonna look for some green pea fowl, you said? Some other wildlife. Got my bike, it has a basket for all my stuff. This is gonna be awesome, I'm so pumped. Here, it's a hornbill, man. A gorgeous freaking hornbill. Okay, now we have reached the observation tower. So we got parrots, we got more doves. It's really cool, you can see the whole surrounding area. This is what, this is what we got over there. Right there. Blossom headed. Cool. We are bringing the bikes back. Yeah, whole day for 150 was five dollars to rent the bike. Totally worth it. Gets you around the park. Gonna do the same thing tomorrow. Now we're heading back to drop them off. We're gonna head back across the river. Now we're on our way back. 
goodbye to my bird buddies. It's cool. Yeah. But birding is cool, man. Birding is, birding cool. is cool, cool for sure. Just bought some gorgeous fresh fruit from the stand here. Wow, look at that juicy pineapple. Puts Ralph's to shame. Anytime you go down to the tropics, anywhere in the world, the produce is gonna taste so much better. I'm back at the hostel having dinner. This looks amazing. Just sort of walk around the town here. This whole place, if I had to guess, has not even a thousand people. This is practically a local town. I mean, you know, there is a bunch of hostels here. A bunch of the signs are in English, but it's just awesome because tourism has not taken over this place. If anyone has ever been to Coita in Costa Rica, this place kind of reminds me of that place. Ecotourism, laid back, tourists are coming here, not to party, but just to chill out and enjoy nature, man. Even though I've only spent an evening in Katia National Park, I highly recommend it. So we're out on the river and it is gorgeous right now. The sun still has yet to come up above the mountains over there and we're seeing a number of birds here. We're hearing gibbons calling. The river looks like coffee, just like in the Amazon. I could use some coffee now too. Thank you. Nice boat ride up and down the river. It took about two hours. It's starting to warm up. I'm gonna see if there's some breakfast here. This looks beautiful. Awesome. All right, now I'm on the boat going back over. I heard there's no bikes over there. The place I'm trying to go is Crocodile Lake, which is on the other side of the park. It's a place with crocodiles, water birds. Somehow all the bikes are taken. I think there was some school group that came in and wiped out all the bikes for the day. And the downside is, is riding your bike across the park. It's quite an experience. Being on your bike, getting some exercise, enjoying the nature around you, you get to stop for wildlife. Instead, I'm gonna take a noisy truck there, but no big deal, I'll just get there quicker, that's the upside. So I figured I would just give you guys some background about this place. This place has a pretty interesting history because people actually sprayed uh, defoliant herbicides all over the forest intentionally in the Vietnam War. You know, most all of this park is not primary forest. I feel like a lot of people when they visit national parks, they picture, you know, pristine land that's never been touched by humans. But the interesting thing about this place is not only has it been touched by humans, but it's been touched by a war. You know, it just reminds us that history is intertwined with ecology. Much of the wildlife has gone extinct, but there still is a lot of cool wildlife in this park. Apparently this is arguably the best place to see wildlife in all of Vietnam, and my truck is finally here. All right, man, I'm here in the truck. Cool, looks like I got some visitors. Here we are, we're on our way to the other side of the park, to Crocodile Lake. All right, now we are here. It's a really nice walk in the understory. It's really not too hot out, which is nice. And you can definitely tell that this forest, like I said earlier, it's secondary forest. It's growing back. You got some tall trees up above, a thick understory. And tropical forests that are primary forest or forests that, you know, have really not been disturbed in like, you know, hundreds or thousands of years. The understory is relatively wide open because of the lack of light. But here, it's nice and thick, which is a sign of a relatively young forest. Because again, we are walking on essentially what, you know, was a war zone, not even like 50 years ago. So really interesting. We're walking on history, walking through an ecology lesson. We made it to Crocodile Lake. We're in this little stopover place. There's people eating food. So we are here. I see some water birds out in the distance. I did see one crocodile very briefly, but he went underwater. I don't really see much wildlife here right now, but uh, this place, it's beautiful, it's cool. It kind of reminds me of the turtle flowage in northern Wisconsin. So we got some dead fish over here. I wonder why they have dead fish right near where some crocodiles are. If you come to Katia, make the hike to Crocodile Lake. This is what I like to call a place that Aldo Leopold would love. I try to be the first people here, because at this time of day, I think most of the wildlife is gone. Just got up, something's wrong I 
waited up with wounds on my feet. Where will you be? Flickering with memories. Now I'm heading back to the park headquarters. I'm with my new Vietnamese friends. No one is saying anything. We're just walking at a good pace, listening to the sounds of the forest. When you go at just like a moderate pace, you can really take in so much more. It's not the best for exercise, it's not the best, you know, to get the adrenaline rush going, but it's just relaxing and you allow yourself to be a naturalist and take everything in. Polaroids yellowed in the sun, longing to be seen. So come and hide, hide with me, hide with me. All right, now we're getting back on. Come and hide. I'm just about starting my bird tour. And sorry, what is your name again? I'm bad with names. Don't, don't. Trong. Yeah, T-R-O-N-G. Trong, cool. Yeah. Just talking to Trong here. So he said that uh, the war definitely had an effect on Cat Tien back in the day, but it was mostly the north part of Cat Tien, you said? Yeah, that's it. How did the war affect the park of Cat Tien? They, they burned uh, the forest long time ago, when, you know, before the forest became a national park. Uh, back in the war, right. there was like, uh, you know, the army base of the communists, and then they, they <coughs> uh, and the, the, uh, the ethnic minority people supported them, giving them some, like, food, something like that, like uh, crops, yeah, to eat at plantations, uh, you know, slash and burn agriculture, lots of uh, defoliants. Oh, the defoliant. Oh, the, the defoliant, yeah, they make the trees dead. So we're gonna go to a hide and see which of these birds have come in to eat the corn. So we got mealworms here and corn. Yeah, and corn. And the mealworms only live for about five hours. Five so, that, hours. so that's good, yeah. so they don't go invasive in the forest. Yeah. All right, man, now I'm going inside the hide. All right, now I'm inside the hide. We're just gonna watch out there and see what birds come out. It's in a bit of an adrenaline rush too. Now we're gonna go look for some other birds. How did you become a bird guide? Uh, learning by doing. That's learning by yeah. doing. Yeah. Unless you actually get out in nature, experience it yourself, you might not learn about it, man. That's why I love experiential, experiential education, adventure education, which is the name my YouTube channel. Why Ram Shama? Why Ram Shama? You can hear the um, jungle fowls just on the left hand side. Wow, what do you say? Stops. That's it. Red jungle fowl. That's the chicken that we eat the, the, at home? <laughs> yeah, that's the, can, that's the mother species? That's like, um, <laughs> uh, um, like um, chicken ancestor. Chicken ancestor, that's yeah. Colonel Sanders. Yeah. How do you think birding tourism helps uh, Vietnam environmentally and economically? It's helped a lot because the bird, uh, birders, uh, uh, for example, the birds that come over here, they, they also, um, they, they, uh, they very, um, they are awareness of um, environment. 
they have to protect the, the forest so that they can see the birds. Yeah. So it opens up jobs too, right? Yeah, it creates more jobs. Yeah. Tourism now, now tourism brings a lot of profit. Yeah. Right. For, um, you know, the owner for for for, um, the, um, for governments and also for for the local people. Yeah. When you guys come to Vietnam, if you go to Ho Chi Minh, come to Cat Tien National Park and find Trong. Thirty-five dollars for the afternoon. An awesome day. Not only did we see birds, we saw monkeys. Trong and I are saying goodbye. Yeah. Hey, goodbye yeah. Again, if you guys come here, contact this guy. This guy's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. And Cat Tien is a beautiful place. Yeah. Not only will he teach you about birds, he'll teach you about so many cool things about Vietnam. So thank you. Yeah. Peace out. Thank you so much. Right now I'm back across the river, man. I stopped at this restaurant. I was like, I have no choice but to eat here because everything on the menu was like a dollar. It's basically just a restaurant in this person's garage and couldn't ask for a more authentic local restaurant, which is pretty freaking cool. So looks like I have a visitor. Oh, ran away. Wow, look at this. We got spring rolls. And now I'm just chilling with the local kids whose uh, parents own the restaurant here. Can you guys say hello? Hello. 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 